As we celebrate the one-year anniversary of Starship's integrated flight test, we're reminded of SpaceX's remarkable achievement, launching the largest, most powerful rocket in history. It's astounding to consider that in just a few weeks, Starship will have completed its fourth flight, bringing us closer to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Now let's explore this week's update and see how SpaceX is gearing up for their next testing milestone. Friday morning began with the removal of the port side actuator from the orbital launch integration tower arms as work continues to upgrade the launch site facilities ahead of Flight 4. Installation of new constraining linkages on the booster hold-down arms started the previous evening and continued through the night and throughout Friday. These appear to be a slightly modified design, though the reason for the change is currently unclear. A new swing actuator was installed on the port side arm of the tower. It's not yet clear if this is simply a replacement or part of the upgrading the power and position of the tower's arms for future booster catch attempts. If all goes well, the first catch attempt could happen as soon as Flight 5. Concrete was poured into framework for a new wall closing off the eastern end of the orbital tank farm's berm. A new booster quick disconnect door was installed on the orbital launch mount, providing improved protection to the ground system's interface panel during launch. The door's mechanisms were tested for the first time in the evening to make sure everything ran smoothly. The door was reopened and the interface panel re-extended a few minutes later. The installation of a new liquid oxygen supply line continued on Saturday, along with new valve assemblies as workers continue their efforts to bring the new tanks into service at the orbital tank farm. Over at the Massey outpost, the ship quit disconnect structure for the new test stand was relocated. Back at the launch site, a second low speed retraction test was performed with the new booster quick disconnect door. Reinstallation of the clamp constraints continued on Sunday morning with a total of 20 clamps on the launch mount. Installation efforts continued throughout the day. A new air conditioning unit was installed on the new platform next to the OTF electrical bunker. This appears to be a simple replacement for the previous unit mounted on the ground and will connect directly into the bunker rather than by long ducts previously used. Monday morning saw the installation of a T-junction for the under-construction liquid oxygen line, which will connect the new hot dog style tanks into the primarily liquid oxygen feed at the launch complex. With the concrete set, formwork was removed from the newly poured perimeter wall on the left side of the launch site's D2 gate. The first upright segment of the flame bucket cradle for the static fire pad was lowered into the flame trench at the Massey outpost. Over at the build site, workers began applying white paint to the structural steel in Star Factory's corner section. Convoys of concrete mixers were at the site of the new parking garage, keeping the pump truck supplied while concrete was placed at the site. Testing was ongoing with the booster quick disconnect door, which was opened once again as workers continued to adjust the system. This was followed by another low speed closure a few hours later. On Tuesday, outside the launch complex, workers finished the removing of the formwork from the new perimeter wall to the left of the D2 gate. Meanwhile, the second upright segment of the flame bucket cradle was lowered into the trench at Massey's outpost. The third upright segment of the flame bucket cradle was brought down for installation just four hours after the second. Reinstallation of the clamp constraints on the orbital launch mount continued with the 11th link. An hour and a half later, the 12th clamp constraint was installed in the orbital launch mount. The fourth and final upright segment of the flame bucket cradle was installed at Massey's outpost late in the afternoon. While the flame trench work was underway, a new bridge crane girder was delivered for Star Factory. Early on Wednesday morning, the quick disconnect panel and door performed another low speed retraction test. Over at the build site, legs for another ship work stand were brought to the main door of Mega Bay 2 before being laid out and pre-staged for installation. One leg was then attached to a crane and uprighted before being brought over to its final position in the front left corner of the bay. Wasting no time, the second leg of the stand was raised vertically and put in place just a few minutes later. Following the same procedure, the remaining four legs were added in quick succession, with all six raised and installed in under an hour. 
While the ship's stand work was underway, a massive load of cribbing and crane mats were brought to the launch complex and set down near the orbital tank farm for SpaceX's LR-11000 crane. Paint and facade work continued at the new Star Factory expansion as work moved towards the next phase of cladding and glass work. Over at the Massey Outpost, the ship Quick Disconnect Tower was brought over to the flame trench and set down ahead of installation. With cribbing in place now, SpaceX's LR-11000 set off towards the orbital tank farm before setting up at the offloading area as workers prepared to remove more of the old, battered vertical tanks from the propellant farm. A few hours after the initial move, the ship quick disconnect structure was picked up and placed over the flame trench at the Massey Outpost. Testing of the new chopstick hydraulic actuator began in the evening as the piston that drives the chopstick arm was fully drawn in for the first time. Following the retraction test, the actuator was moved back and forth, allowing workers to evaluate its operation. Early on Thursday morning, the load spreader for the 12-meter propellant tank shell was brought to the launch complex. Construction continues on the new office building as multiple columns went in to expand the active footprint of the structure. Shortly after sunrise, the first load of glass for the outside corner of the Star Factory expansion was delivered to the build site and offloaded. Over at the launch complex, the rear hood of the booster quick disconnect was removed from the orbital launch mount once again and parked near the orbital tank berm. Later in the afternoon and in a repeat of Wednesday's testing, the new chopsticks actuator was put through its paces, moving the arm back and forth. Outside the launch complex, the LR-11000 slewed towards the site entrance, lowered its main block and started to pick up the 12-meter load spreader. As the sun set into the night, the left chopstick continued its battery of extension and retraction testing. This week at the Cape, Friday saw Falcon 9 Booster 1062 lift off on a record-breaking 20th mission, carrying the Starlink Group 6-49 mission into orbit. Bob then returned to Port Canaveral on Sunday, carrying both fairing halves from the Starlink G6-48 launch and towing just read the instructions with Falcon 9 Booster 1083 after its second flight. Bob and just read the instructions returned to sea on Sunday in support of the Starlink Group 6-51 mission. Back at the docks, Falcon 9 Booster 1083 was laid into the horizontal transporter to be returned to the famous Roberts Road. Later in the evening, Doug returned with fairing halves from Starlink Group 6-49. Monday saw the return of Signet Warhorse 3 with the short fall of Gravitas and Falcon 9 Booster 1062. A few hours later, Booster 1062 was then lifted onto the recently vacated dock stand for stowage. Signet Warhorse 3 then headed to sea with a short fall of Gravitas on Tuesday, ready to support the Starlink Group 6-52 mission. Doug also headed out later in the evening in support of that same mission. On Wednesday, Falcon 9 Booster 1077 lifted off on its 12th flight for the Starlink Group 6-51 mission. Falcon 9 Booster 1062 finished its stay at the dock on Thursday, being laid onto the horizontal transporter for refurbishment at Roberts Road. Falcon 9 Booster 1080 then lifted off with Starlink Group 6-52, carrying 23 more Starlink V2 mini satellites into orbit on SpaceX's 40th Falcon launch for 2024. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching everyone. Lab Padre out.